So um, today my sermon's going to be out of 1 John 5, verse 11. So if you would stand for the reading of that word <clears throat> before we begin the, the message today. 1 John chapter 5, verse 11. And this is the record that God has given to us eternal life, and this life is in his Son. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, as we today look at the promise that you have given us of eternal life, I pray that this word will go out. It will find fertile soil, and, and it'll produce uh, 60, 100-fold, Lord. Lord, we thank you that we can come together and approach your word. And today, we ask your blessing on it. Lord, I ask you, anoint the gift you've given me. And I ask it humbly in Jesus' name. Amen. You may be seated. <clears throat> so the last few weeks, as we've been approaching Easter, we've been looking at promises that God has given us. And today, uh, we're going to look at the promise of eternal life. Now, I just read you 1 John 5, verse 11, but I want to continue on and, and read the next verse as we get ready to really look at this promise of eternal life. 1 John 5, 11 and 12 and this is the testimony, the record that God gave us eternal life, and this life is in his Son. Whoever has the Son has life. Whoever does not have the Son of God does not have life. So we have a promise here that God has given us eternal life. Well, the first thing, though, we need to realize is that life is in his Son. Now, um, John, the same John that wrote this letter, 1 John, also wrote a gospel. And that gospel starts with this. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things were made through him, and without him was not anything made that was made. In him was life, and the life was was the light of men. So we need to, as we get ready to look at this promise of eternal life, realize that that life is found in his Son. The Word of God. The Word made flesh. In fact, um, John goes down and writes a little further in that same chapter he came to his own, and his own people did not receive him. But to all who did receive him, who believed in his name, he gave the right to become the children of God, who were born not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. That born of God, that born again, that Kaylin read to us this morning, um, for God so loved the world that um, he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have eternal life. That promise is to all who believe in the son. In fact, Jesus goes as far to say in John 14, 6, that he is the way, the truth, and the life, and no one comes to the father except through him. See, this life, this eternal life, is kind of locked up in one person. Jesus Christ. And if we believe in him, we believe on his name, we believe the good news about him, which we're going to get to, then we receive eternal life. We will not perish, but we will have eternal life. Now, <clears throat> Paul writes to Timothy in his second letter this. Paul, an apostle of Christ Jesus by the will of God, according to the promise of the life that is in Christ Jesus. 
to Timothy, my beloved child. But Paul starts this letter to his spiritual son, reminding him that this promise of life is found in Jesus Christ. Now, I'm just here to remind you. Uh, maybe you all know that, you precious saints. But I'm just here to remind you that that life is found in Jesus Christ. Now, like Kaylin read to us second John, uh, in John 3.16, if we believe in Jesus Christ, we shall not perish, but have eternal life. See, there is a wage to not believing. Uh, Romans 6.23 says, uh, For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life. Eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. See, there is a perishing and a not perishing. There is a, a wage and a gift. And if you haven't received the gift, you're going to pay the wage. Now, these kids, bless their heart, are, are literally did an object lesson for y'all. You, you know, they, they came up here and they professed that they believed that Jesus Christ was the Son of God. They just have the promise of eternal life. Not because of the baptism, you, you understand that. And it's not going to be because we take communion today that you, you are uh, saved and have eternal life. But because there is a communion and because there is a baptism, that's why we have eternal life. First John. We're going to go back to First John. Chapter 2. <clears throat> Verse 24 says, Let what you heard from the beginning abide in you. If what you heard from the beginning abides in you, then you too will abide in the Son and in the Father. And this is the promise that he made to us, eternal life. It's that choosing. It's that idea that he who has the Son has life. He who has not the Son has not life. Now, <sighs> let's talk about what these kids, Trevor and, and Kaylin and Corey, have all decided and what they've heard. Now, Romans 10, 9 and 10 says, If you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For with the heart one believes and is justified, and with the mouth one confesses and is saved. If you confess with your mouth Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart. Let me see. I have my little, uh, my little formula. Do you believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God? I believe. Then, in keeping with the command. See, they confess with their mouth, Jesus is Lord. Now, they've done it way before they got wet. I'm telling you, getting wet does not do this for you. It's just a public statement of a private decision they made. Now, that's the emphasis of my next verse because sometimes I think we think all these things we do save us. But you have to remember in Ephesians chapter 2, verses 8 and 9, Scripture says, For by grace you have been saved 
through faith. Grace, unmerited favor, you have been saved. For it is by grace you have been saved through faith. And this is not your own doing, it is the gift of God. Not a result of works, so that no one may boast. I mean, Lord, look at me. I got wet from the top of my head to the bottom of my feet. That doesn't matter. That doesn't save you. It's God's grace that saves you through faith. Receiving that. First Corinthians 15 is exactly what every person that gets uh, water baptism, every person that goes and is um, baptized, submerged in water, this is what they are, this is what they're proclaiming, this is what they're, they're showing the world, is 1 Corinthians 15, 1 through 5. Now, I would remind you, brothers, of the gospel I preached to you, which you received in which you stand, and by which you are being saved. If you hold fast to the word I preached to you, unless you believed it in vain. For I delivered to you as of first importance what I also received, that Christ died for our sins in accordance with the scriptures, that he was buried and that was that he was raised on the third day in accordance with the scriptures, and that he appeared to Cephas, to Peter, then to the twelve. See, that's what saves us. Believing that Jesus Christ came, died for our sins according to the scriptures, was buried, and then on the third day rose again according to the scriptures. Your faith in that will allow the grace of God to save you. Now, Trevor and Corey and Kaylin and Devlin just this year have all believed that so much that they came up and wanted to show the world that that's how much they believed it. They stood there, they went under, and they came up. Literally, the good news. Christ came, was buried, and rose again. Right? So, this morning, um, if you're a precious saint, good on you. Good reminder today. Right? Praise God. It's a good reminder that we are saved by grace through faith. If you are just kind of a wanderer, well, search the scriptures to see if they're true. Um, ask somebody around you that's a believer. Let them tell you what they can say. If you're a skeptic, well, then I... I uh, Yes, you might be here just to um, be with your family and friends because we're most of us are pretty nice. We're kind of a fun crowd to hang out with. But but if that's why you're here, don't forget there's more than that. There's life and death. There's eternal life and perishing. Draw close to God and he'll draw close to you. But there might be somebody that's just kind of an honest doubter. Kind of like Thomas. Well, I'm not going to believe you. Yeah. He said, I'm not going to believe until I see the nail prints in his hands and feet and put my hand in his side. You know what honest doubters get? Proof. That's what they get. So, don't leave today being anything but a precious saint. This is your opportunity. Amen?